In this video, we want to practice some of the calculations that we need for this week's lab. In our story, two students, Jack and Jill, are competing to determine who is better at using a volumetric pipette. Using the same 10 milliliter volumetric pipette, both students measure the mass of a liquid whose density is known to be 0 0.8251 grams per milliliter five separate times, and then summarize the results in the tables below. We want to determine which student is more accurate and which student is more precise. The students actually measured the masses of what they thought was 10 milliliters using the 10 milliliter volumetric pipette. To determine who's more accurate and more precise, we need to first convert the actual individual masses of liquid into a volume they actually delivered. We can do that with the density information that we're given. So density as a conversion factor, we convert from grams of liquid into volume of liquid. So for trial one, for example, 8.141 grams of liquid, density as a conversion factor, we want grams to be on the bottom, so that units cancel, milliliters on top, one milliliter is equivalent to 0 0.8251 grams for this substance. So practically dividing the mass by the density, we convert a mass of 8.141 grams into the equivalent volume of about 9.8667 milliliters. With the values I'm given, I'm only justified to have four significant figures in my final answer. But because this is not a final answer, I'll keep one extra digit and give me five digits um, for these intermediate answers. So a mass of 8.141 grams is equivalent to a volume of 9.8667 milliliters. We'll then do that for the other four trials. Each case dividing the mass of the liquid by that same density of 0 0.8251. Now I've converted all of the masses into their equivalent volumes. I can now determine how accurate Jack was with his results. For accuracy, we will use the calculation of percent error. Percent error, simply the experimental value minus the true number divided by the true number times 100%. Notice that in order to determine accuracy, we have to have a true value, a known value that we can rely upon. For our experimental value, we could use any of the individual data points, but normally this class, when we take multiple measurements, repeated measurements of the same thing over and over again, usually our best value is going to be the average, which is what we'll do here. So I'll find the average of my five volumes by simply adding up the five individual values and then dividing that by the number of observations, which is also five. So 9.8667 plus 9.8691 plus 9.8752 plus 9.8618 plus 9.8703 gives me the sum of those five observations. Then divide that by the number of observations, which is five, produces the average of 9.8686 milliliters. So on average, Jack delivered about 9.8686 milliliters with the 10 milliliter volumetric pipette. This value though, 9.8686 milliliters, this would be our experimental value. This is our best value. So the percent error then is 9.8686 milliliters minus the true value, which is 10 milliliters, 
pipette is manufactured to deliver 10 milliliters of liquid divided by that same true value of 10 milliliters times 100%. So in this case, Jack's percent error is 9.8686 minus 10 divided by 10 times 100, or a negative 1.3%. So we then can conclude that on average, Jack was delivering about 1.3% less volume than he thought he was. And that percent error says going to allow us to determine how accurate Jack was and to compare his accuracy to Jill's. For precision, we can use a variety of statistics, but for our course, we'll simply use range, which is the difference between the maximum number and the minimum number, the largest number and the smallest number. So the range of Jack's data is the largest number, which in this case was trial three, 9.8752, minus his smallest number, which was trial four, 9.8618. That range for Jack then is about 0 0.013 milliliters. And that's gonna be an indication of how precise Jack was. For both percent error and range, percent error, accuracy, range, precision, we like to have numbers that are smaller, closer to zero. Then to compare, Jack's accuracy and Jack's precision. We want to then compare that to Jill's results. And so for that, we'll do exactly the same thing with Jill's data. She also determined the mass of the same liquid five times. We'll first convert each of those masses into volumes by dividing by respect to the echo density of the liquid, find the average of those volumes, use that average as part of a percent error calculation, and then finally, determine range by taking the maximum volume, subtracting from that the minimum volume. We are keeping one extra digit in these calculations to avoid rounding errors. So with five volumes of Jill's data, we can find then her average volume that she delivered was about 10.059 milliliters. That number then is going to be our experimental value for our percent error calculation. So her percent error was then going to be 10.059 minus 10 divided by 10 times 100 gives us a percent error for Jill of only about positive 0.59%. That's gonna be an indication of how accurate Jill was. Finally, to determine how precise Jill was, we will once again calculate the range, the maximum volume that she delivered minus the minimum volume. Our maximum volume was in trial number one, 10.279 milliliters. And the minimum volume was in trial four, 9.8837. To give her a range from her data of about 0 0.395. which rounds to about 0 0.4 milliliters. 
So now I can finally answer the question of who is more accurate, who is more precise. With accuracy, we want percent error closer to zero. And Jack's accuracy was negative 1.3%. Jill's accuracy was positive 0.59%. So because 0.59% is closer to zero than negative 1.3, we could say then that Jill, in this case, is more accurate. She was, her values are closer to the true volume. For precision though, we're gonna look at range. And once again, the smaller the value, the more precise. Jill's range is 0.4 milliliters. Jack's range is 0 0.013 milliliters. Because Jack's value is smaller, we could say then that Jack was more precise. Notice that just because data is accurate does not necessarily mean it's precise and vice versa.